Sheila Carr program is known for its research in image-guided minimally invasive therapies and health outcomes research. We're trying to move basic ideas from the bench through to clinical practice through experimental studies involving multiple disciplinary teams, close collaborations with commercial partners and patient partners, as well as working with government uh, to alter health policy through health system studies. We're recognized as leaders in image-guided, minimally invasive therapy and health outcomes research, particularly with clinical targets of ischemic disease, complex arrhythmias, and structural heart disease. In the era of MRI, we're trying to better identify who's at highest risk for heart attack and stroke, what happens in the heart in terms of the response and repair after a heart attack, so that we can better identify therapies to reduce progression towards chronic disease. We're also looking at the role of imaging for management of complex arrhythmias, particularly in guiding device implantation and in ablation therapies, as well as in revascularization of occlusive peripheral vascular disease. So at Sunnybrook, we've been following patients post-MI, and we've been compiling a registry of these patients in order to determine how cardiac MR could help us uh, in the assessment of these patients. So we know that cardiac MR is the gold standard in the assessment of left ventricular function. Our group has been one of the first to look at right ventricular function and the evolution of right ventricular function over time. And because we're able to do that, we're able to pinpoint the exact time where the RV recovers after a heart attack. And that's important clinically because it allows a clinician to know when is the optimal time to order the MRI scan. So the underlying processes and remodeling that happens following acute myocardial infarction are complex. Various mechanisms are acting simultaneously to repair the heart. Uh, the focus of my research is to use quantitative magnetic resonance imaging biomarkers to characterize some of the underlying pathophysiology. For example, uh, MR imaging biomarkers can evaluate and quantify edema, hemorrhage, microvascular injury, and cell viability. So from our recent finding that hemorrhage is a complication and can be neutralized using an ion chelator called a ferriprone, we partnered with Apopharma to further investigate its cardioprotective properties uh, in the setting of acute myocardial infarction. And this is a fine example of uh, collaboration between Shulikart program and an industry partner. Hyperpolarized MRI is a new form of MRI that images a contrast agent that we um, create next to the scanner and inject into patients immediately before imaging. It's well known that in heart failure uh, there are changes in how the heart uses fuel such as glucose or fatty acids. The interesting thing about hyperpolarized imaging is that it's a non-invasive way of seeing metabolism in tissue so it enables us to look at patients hearts at an early stage before they've developed end-stage heart failure and potentially pick patients that are appropriate for new therapies. We have developed methods for imaging metabolism in the heart which uh, no other sites have. So. We're excited to take these forward into patient studies. Magnetic resonance imaging is very helpful in cardiac arrhythmia management. In particular, magnetic resonance imaging can allow us to make appropriate diagnoses. For example, in patients who have cardiomyopathies and require defibrillators, knowing the exact cause of the cardiomyopathy can be determined with MRI. And this is quite helpful for us to determine what's the appropriate treatment as well as the prognosis for these patients. So currently I'm collaborating with an engineering student named Philippa Cron in the Schulich-Hart program. Her project deals with using real-time MRI to allow placement of catheters in the heart and deliver ablation energy. The work that's being performed at the Schulich-Hart program is very important work and we're very fortunate to have the funding from granting agencies and donors to help us complete our work. One of the projects that we're currently working on is the development of devices to be able to guide the revascularization of chronic total occlusions in the peripheral vasculature with MRI. And for this particular application, what we're trying to do is use MRI to literally open up blocked blood vessels. At the Device Development Lab here at Sunnybrook, we're fortunate enough to have a lot of equipment that enables us to build near production quality devices um, at research quantities. And the reason why this is important is because it enables us to iterate very, very quickly in our designs so that we're able to move from prototype right to eventual use in patients very, very quickly. Right now, whether we do a bypass surgery or an angioplasty or a stent for a patient with a chronic total occlusion of their leg arteries, there's a lot going on that we can't see. We can infer a lot from the technology that we currently have 
but using MRI and new MRI techniques will help us far better characterize the plaque itself and damage to the arteries in other areas of the tree. We've developed MRI techniques to very well characterize lesions in the peripheral vasculature, but so far we've done these on specimens outside of living patients. The next step for us now is to take those techniques and scale them into something that can be done in a feasible amount of time and using clinically available MRI machines. Collaborations with practitioners is critical to making sure we understand the clinical challenges and the context of the therapy so that our research has the maximum potential for changing patient outcomes. We're looking forward to substantial expansion in the future along the lines of our strategic priorities. Building on our innovation focus, we're introducing a new Medventions program, bringing together clinicians, engineers, and business expertise to promote translation through commercialization. We're also moving some of our most promising preclinical results toward patient studies involving both imaging and health outcomes evaluations so that we can most effectively use limited health resources to maximize benefit across our patient population.